This episode has been brought to you by Flowstate, the unlimited Webflow development service. Find out more at flowstate.dev. Wow, Webflow Conference 2023 has just happened and they released an awful lot. So let's talk about it. Welcome to Webflow Conf 2023. I'm a bit late to the game because I've just landed in South Africa and it was a bit late for me. So of course I needed some rest, but let's talk about everything that was announced and sort of some initial thoughts and uh, just give you the rundown basically. But the first thing you'll notice, which you'll have access to instantly is the brand new UI, the brand new logo as well, which I'm not sure whether I like it just yet, but it definitely feels a bit Japanesey with these kind of three lines going through, ending up in a square. I don't know, you, you tell me what your interpretation of logo is. It's different, a welcome change, I guess. But taking a look at the UI here, you'll see that everything's a lot more contrasty. We go into the style panel here, brighter colors, more contrast, and just tightened up that interface. I would argue that this potentially needs a little bit more padding from an accessibility standpoint. Everything is bunched up very close together and the text is quite small. So my only complaint there is that you might be missing, miss, missing targets. But otherwise it looks nice and uh, I, I dig it. First thing they announced was localization, native localization in Webflow. Before now, you'd have to use external tools like Weglot. This isn't out now, unfortunately, uh, but they will be releasing it. So right inside of Webflow, you can change the language and everything else is handled for you as you expect in Webflow. The second thing, thing they announced is native 3D support using Spline. I would have liked to have seen 3GS, but 3GS is very technical and I think Spline more aligns with the no code ethos of Webflow. But you obviously need to create those Spline scenes inside of Spline, but you'd export them, you take the URL and you dump it into a brand new Spline component uh, which you can ha access now. You just dump the URL in there. And what's beautiful about this is that it gives you access to the lights, the objects, the groups, and you can animate those objects and lights and groups and things like that inside the interactions panel. It's a really nice addition to Webflow. Very welcome change, particularly as 3D is becoming far more popular now. A good website to look at is unseen.co. They release a lot of 3D stuff, but it's also very beautifully designed as well. So it's got that kind of blend of the two. So take a look at that if you're looking for some inspiration on some of the stuff. People that are pushing the boundaries of what 3D can do on the web. So yeah, um, back to the user interface here. What you'll immediately notice is that anytime you hover over something, you've got the kind of variable, purple variable uh, plus sign. And this enables us to add CSS variables or custom properties inside of Webflow. And this is great because you can start to standardize all of the sizes that you're using and then reuse those things in here. So over the left, on the left-hand side here, you've got a variables panel here, and we can start to add some size, fonts, and color variables. Another beautiful thing about it is that you can access it from inside your custom code. And once again, you can animate all these within the interactions panel. It was really quite nice, really nice. What I also really enjoyed was the actual custom properties, which is basically, I think, writing inline CSS. So if a CSS property that you want isn't in the style panel, you can just add it yourself and then add a value to that, which can also be, as what we previously mentioned, the, the custom variables as well. So looking forward to that. Uh, not quite available yet, but another really nice low code option for like just further enhancements to your styling. Components themselves have a, a new overhaul. There's been a subtle centralization of all the custom properties uh, for components. So it's a bit easier to kind of digest and, and handle all that. But also the big one is slots. Now what slots do is they enable you to kind of create an area where anything can go in there. So it really extends the use of your components. They demonstrated sort of like a, a, a two column grid type of component. And on the right hand side, is just a slot for you to dump whatever you want in. You can drop any kind of component or any kind of element into that slot there. So again, really welcome, really extending the power and functionality of Webflow and uh, make it such a powerful tool, to be honest. They also spoke about increasing the capabilities of the developer API and the designer API, uh, giving them access to variables and uh, components. 
but also the localization, which is going to come in a few months. So those are expanding as well. So bringing more power to those that are developing apps. They've also updated the Figma to Webflow plugin for Figma and its companion app, which is something called Design, uh, Design System Sync. So instead of you know just copying the code and then just pasting it into webflow there's actually a synchronization that's happening and then you'll have access to the components as they've been built in in figma you can accept those changes as well which is quite nice really really handy for uh for developers working with designers with regards to the dev link they're really pushing forward with this you're able to import your own pre-built react components into webflow and what's great about this is that the developer can actually define what properties the designer is able to manipulate within Webflow. They showed off displaying a certain number of cards on like a Teams widget type of thing. Uh, so that's really, really cool. And you can also change the styles within Webflow, the colors of text and things like that. I'm not quite sure how they're doing that, but I look forward to uh, diving deeper into that one. I'm very curious to look into this because of course you wouldn't use React inside of a marketing website. You'd use something like Next where it pre-builds or pre-renders pre that code. So if they're, uh, <laughs> Again, if they're using React and it's all live, then I'd have questions about, or at least I, 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 in, I encourage you to look into kind of the correct usage of Next.js or like the, the downsides to using React inside of a marketing website that relies on SEO and accessibility and the like. So all the same stuff we talk about on this channel anyway. So anyway, looking forward to looking more into that basically. And a little sneaky update they made as well, which I think has gone on notice, that they've increased the CMS count, I think by 30xing. Something crazy. And they've also increased the word uh, page count as well by 5x. So really welcome change there, um, particularly if you're building e-commerce websites and big blogs and stuff like that. So that was it. So there's the update. I hope you enjoyed it. To me, it looks like Webflow really doubling down on the developer side of the tool. They've really leaned into the fact that they are, are, are an advanced development tool. When Framer came in, there was a worry there that because it abstracts a lot of the concepts away from you, a bit simpler, that people would move over to Framer. But Webflow have really just widened the gap, particularly with this update. So I look forward to sharing my learnings as these features become available and I, I can record some so to show you how to use them and my thoughts and feelings and all the rest of it like subscribe until next time happy no coding <laughs>